So this channel, we don't hate. We try to congratulate when possible and when we cannot congratulate, but we can acknowledge, we try to do that. So, Mel Murder gives a letter, sends a letter, writes a letter to Judge Inglemeyer. And that's what we're going to talk about here. And for everybody that is, might think that, uh, I'm going to attack him for it. I'm going to let you know right now I'm not. I think it was a smart move. And also, watch the whole video. I know this is a little long, but I'm getting back into this. Watch the whole video and let me know what y'all think. Drop them comments. Me and the Notification Gang would like to invite everybody to come join us Monday through Thursday, 9.20 to 10 o'clock for Morning Coffee, where we discuss the events of the prior day and also just talk mess about stuff. See you then. BBN, Jack Frost. What's up, party people? Alright, so, yeah. So apparently, Mel Matrix decided to write a letter to the judge. Before I read the letter, there's a couple of things that I want to say. These are just my opinions. I am, th these things that I'm going to say is my opinions. I, and I'm the only one that probably holds these opinions. I'm not attributing these opinions to anyone else. And I say that to say this. Um, as far as I know, the way that the judicial system is ran now, whenever you cop a plea to something and or get found guilty of a charge, often people want to give a letter to the judge, basically speaking, especially, might I add, especially when you cop a plea to something, when you admit your guilt about something. Uh, I, I, let's just only talk about when somebody cops a plea. Just so we can be clear on this. Alright, so usually when someone does this, they write a letter to the judge. It is what it is. They ask for, um, you know, forgiveness, I guess. Or, you know, they, they speak about or they want to tell the judge how they feel about whatever part of the crime that they they, they were participating in. And they try to sound contrite, I guess. And this is what people do in order to try not to spend the rest of their life in jail. They want to get a favorable sentence. They've already copped to whatever the thing is. So they want to get a favorable sentence. So this is something that's done a lot. I, I don't understand what the problem is with anyone doing this. I think that this is a smart move. I'm pretty sure that your lawyer is going to tell you 100% of the time, write a letter to the judge. Anyway, so we have Mel Matrix's, uh, Mel Murder, Mel Matrix's, uh, Jamel Jones letter in front of us. I'm going to read the letter. And then after that, I got a couple of things I want to say. All right. So dear judge Inglemeyer, I hope this letter reaches you and you are in good health and spirits. As for me, I am sitting at MDC, thinking about a lot of poor choices I've made in life. When I think back, a lot of my issues started when I was a young kid, just trying to be long. Coming up as a kid, I did not really have a positive role model in my life. I found myself as a very angry teen because of the things I experienced and the things I saw at home behind closed doors. I took to the streets heavy at the age of 14 a lot of my friends suffered the same way I did or worse. So we became each other's comfort blankets. The older guys in my neighborhood that embraced us were thugs off the corner and they were involved in legal act, illegal activities like drugs and violence. But at least they seemed to care about our well-being or so we thought at the time. I, reality, I can see now. That they were really just molding us to become younger criminals because they knew we really had nothing. They knew we really had nobody. And we were gullible young kids looking to fit in and find father figures. We looked at these guys for the love we were missing. 
That is when the United Bloods Nation came into my life at 15 years of age. Between my anger and loyalty to the game, I made a lot of bad decisions, trying not to let the gang down. By the time I was 18, going on 19 years old, my childhood sweetheart, Dawn Galipsy, gave birth to my beautiful daughter. That's when I realized I wanted more for myself, my child, and for my heart, Dawn. But the streets still had a hold on me. I was at war in my very own head. I wanted to fall back from the gang and do the right thing by my family. But I felt like I was somehow being wrong to my gang family. Because at that point, I really believed they had been there for me when I had no one. What I did was try to distance myself as much as possible. I started working in the music industry. I got signed to Diplomat Records. When I was 24 years old and things were looking up for me, I found myself staying away from negativity, but I was becoming very popular. And with that life came a lot of envy, money, and women. This all caused me to lose Dawn because of my own cheating and inability to be home because of the demands of touring and life in the industry. I found myself depressed and falling back into my old ways, going back to the streets because I was unhappy. I had lost my earlier life, though I now had money and fame. I felt like something was missing. A lot of dormant anger from my childhood came back to the surface. When I tried to return to the game, they were mostly only concerned with my present reputation and what I can do for them financially. It was at that point that I realized their love was never genuine. They gave me a position of authority because of who I was and my age. During that time, in my mind, I decided that I was done with the streets and I still tried to keep close ties to some of the guys I knew from the gang. I know that they I know that there was where I went wrong. I know that is where I went wrong. My real family I now realized was my mother, Dawn, my aunts, and my brother. I got to back I got together, I got back together with Dawn, and she gave me a baby boy. My pride and joy. I realize I have to break the cycle because I don't want my son or daughter going through what I did. I want the best for them. I know I should have woken up and realized this early, especially when I was shot five times and my loved ones almost lost me. Now I find myself caught up in this case, and this is the first time I'm in real serious trouble. But I can promise you that it will be my last. I am not a part of the violence in this case, and this federal arrest has been a real wake-up call for me. I sincerely apologize for all my actions and take full responsibility. I ask for leniency, a second chance, to return to my children as soon as possible. I want to return to my family and right all the wrongs that I can and right all the wrongs so I can be there for them. They need me, and I definitely need them. It is a must that I break the cycle. It is killing me that I'm not there for my children and my loved ones. I'm completely done with the streets. I plan to change my environment as well as the company that I keep. To me, right now, the most important company to keep is that of my family and my children. Please allow me to return to them as soon as possible. I don't need a whole lot of time to fix myself. I need counseling and for you to believe in me. And I see that I'm not and see that I'm not the monster they paint me to be. Please understand that I'm human. And I ask you for a second chance. Respectfully submitted, Jamel Jones. Now, uh, real quick, there's a couple of things that I want to say about the actual letter that he wrote. And before we get there, there's there's one more thing that I want to say. If you look in this letter, first of all, I think this is a very well written letter as far as uh what would be expected from a judge when you're writing a letter asking for leniency but if you look at the first sentence of this letter basically the first two sentences i'm going to read them over so you get an understanding of what i'm talking about he says i hope this letter reaches you and you are in good health and spirits as for me i'm just sitting at mdc thinking about a lot of poor choices i've made in life when I think back, a lot of my issues started when I was a young kid, just trying to belong. Now, I'm pretty sure none of us 
that grew up in the street, anywhere hit near the street, is gonna think about writing that. So right there, that entail that basically lets you know that his lawyers basically encourage this. This is not a bad thing. For people that want to say, well, he was a gang member. Why is he asking for leniency? He wasn't asking for leniency when he was committing crimes. Yes, I, I don't understand why anybody would commit a crime. And while they're committing the crime saying, please, please forgive me for my actions. <laughs> I'm not trying to laugh at anybody's predicament. It's just I'm laughing at the foolishness that people try to uh, imply. Like somebody is... Is, 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 is going to be remorseful upon them while they're committing actual crimes. That's a rarity. That's not something that is, is commonplace. So that he didn't walk around saying, please forgive me while committing any of these transgressions that he's been accused of, that is not a reason to say that he deserves one thing or the other, in my opinion. Anyway, Another thing he pointed out in this particular letter that I think is important is he's not a part of any of the violent crimes. He isn't. There are no violent crimes in this case that, that his name pop up on that I know of. I keep telling y'all. Apologies about that um, sound you just heard. I keep telling y'all all of this that is going on in New York City. All of this that's wrapped up around this, how they went after the gangs in New York City, has a lot to do with the the, the incident surrounding Junior. Rest in peace, Junior. Justice for Junior. And the uh, Trinitarios situation. Which was violence. So he's saying, look, I'm not a part of the violence that's in this case. He's also saying, you know, I had a troubled childhood. He's also asking to have some kind of counseling. And I think this is just me speaking. I can be wrong about this, but I, I, I don't understand why more counseling isn't given to individuals when you know that they're, they're subject to uh, when they're growing up in certain environments or they've been committing uh, specific crimes already i think that the one of the things that need to be more handedly giving out is when somebody has committed a crime as long as it's not a violent crime or as long as it's not a crime that uh would be seen as something where they can't be i mean it could be argued that no one that commits a crime can be trusted but as long as it's not a violent crime or as long as it isn't like larceny or a, a crime that deals with uh stealing we need to start trying to give people counseling and employment. A lot of the BS that happens is due to lack of skills. Now, I'm not trying to say it's in his specific case, but a lot of times people fall back on rap because a lack of life skills. A lot of time people fall back on basketball or other sports because they have a lack of life skills. And this is the easiest way to get out of the hood. Because in order to become a good basketball player, football player, or any sport, all you have to do is have work ethic and work hard. You can create that skill level. You can you can work out to the point where you are extremely athletic and it can help you get out of the environment in which you are in. A lot of people go to the studio, rap, because they have a lack of being able to go out there and work a job that isn't minimum wage. Now, with that being said, there's nothing wrong with minimum wage jobs. I've had a ton of them. But we have to start looking at how are we going to help individuals instead of ostracize, instead of push them to the side, instead of treat them like they are non-existent. We exist. I want uh leave it down in the comment section. I want to know what y'all think about this letter specifically. Everything in the letter. I want to know what y'all think about it. Listen to it a couple of times over. Um, it's right up there on the screen. You can read it for yourself. Also, I got the pages flipping back and forth, but I want to know, first of all, I want to know do, do, who blames him for writing this letter. Who thinks someone committing a crime 
then copping out because they're saying, look, I did it. I think that once you say that you did a thing, you have, you can apologize. This is basically an, an apology for his actions. Once you admit that you've done something, you can apologize. I don't understand. I don't understand how there's people saying that you can't apologize. So if somebody does something that they know is wrong and then they admit to it, they still can't apologize because you should have never did it in the first. I don't understand that logic. So leave it down in the comment section. I want to know what you guys think about this. I'm not going to hold y'all no longer. Like, comment, subscribe. Join the notification gang. Hashtag Bronx Bombers. Let's get it. I love y'all. Take care of each other. Hug the kids for me. I haven't forgotten about you. And that's all I got on this one. I'm out. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you would like to help dictate the direction that this channel takes, please leave a comment. All comments are appreciated, whether positive or negative. Thank you very much and enjoy your day. And remember, positive thoughts cause for positive things to happen. Let's get it.